Hello and welcome to second part of tutorial regarding soft motion. In the first part we covered MC power and we literally did not have any problems. We use a drive in out of the box condition and we literally managed to communicate and even run it. Now today we do additional step. We will try to move this drive. We will do simple movement with move velocity. But before we begin, let's talk about regarding our configuration. So what we have in the configuration is Raspberry Pi with Raspbian Buster Lite. And on top we are running Codices PLC. Codices PLC for Raspberry Pi is freely available on Codices Store, like Codices Development Tool. And you can download it and use it without any license for at least two hours. We need to have 24 volt power supply to supply the logic for our drive. We have Lexium 32 and BMH motor from Schneider Electric and EtherCAD is running between Raspberry and Servo drive. For that we are using the latest version of Codices. We literally have drive and a motor connected with power and encoder cable. We have one piece of Ethernet cable between Ethernet port from Raspberry to EtherCAT port on Lexium 32. And we have additional Wi-Fi connection between PC and Raspberry. On PC we are running codices with Raspberry SL add-on. Now let's continue inside codices. So we have our project from the previous video. With a small change, we deleted GPIO just not to use it and to waste CPU power. And also we a bit cosmetically changed our project that we have coding according to PLC open coding guidelines. I will put the link down below. Except that nothing else has changed. We can see we also have our init, our motion function blocks, actions, everything is more or less the same. Before we start, we need to make an axis configuration. We click on axis and we have this general tab where we define is our axis finite or modulo. Because we have only a motor without any real mechanics or linear mechanics, we just see the shaft. It's fairly normal to say that let's use this as a modulo. And our modulo is something based on also our units. And probably we will use degrees. So what you want to see is 0 to 360 degrees. And this is actually what we set up in our model. Now to make a scaling correct, we click on scaling. And here we have motor type, which is rotary. We see that our motor is rotary motor. And now we have number of increments. This number here is actually the real number of position scaling inside our drive. And we want to make it 360 units is our application, which will represent degrees. Now we can start to program our move velocity. With move velocity, we need to create an instance, but also we need to create another instance, which is called MC stop. And this is needed to properly stop the axis. So shift F2, MC move velocity axis 0 1 type input assistant MC move velocity okay okay then again shift F2 we want MC stop oh let's name it with a capital MC stop axis 0 1 and type is going to be MC stop. And OK. So we declared our variables. Now it's time to call these instances of our function blocks. We go to our motion function blocks. Hit enter. Press F2. Instance call. Move velocity. Press enter, F2, instance call, MC stop. Okay, let's make it full screen. 
Now let's put it in one line. And of course, we need to add mandatory input output, which is axis on both instances. So we copy axis 0, 1, control C, control V, control V, and all looks good. We do not have pre compiling errors. Or we do, yeah, because we put it in the wrong place. Let's put it here and remove from execute. Okay, now let's prepare visualization. We go to basic, select a frame. So MC move velocity. Okay, in properties references we select mc move velocity instance in our program enter again visualization toolbox we add a frame mc stop okay we add it here references and MC stop okay and we load this program into PLC yes PLC is running all looks okay we run okay communication is running we enable our drive it's in run and now we set a velocity so now if we put 360 this would mean we want 360 degrees per second let's put some acceleration 200 200 the acceleration this is minimum that is needed for this function block and let's execute now immediately we have command aborted and on the display we see a 302 display of the drive if we check what is in axis general we see SMC DI hardware limits which exceeded. Now by default, the limits which is inside the drives are active. We need to disable it. The easiest way is to disable it using startup list inside our drive on Ethercat. We click on our drive and there is a startup parameter list. How to disable limit switches is described in fact in the product manual and on page 384 you will find limit switch handling for positive and negative limit switch. So main point is to remember this value, which is the parameter 3006 for both and sub index 10 and F. And we need to put value zero to disable both of limit switches. In startup list, we simply add, now we scroll down and found out, find our parameters. 10 with value 0 we add then add another one again 3006 and we added positive now we need to add negative with value 0 okay so let's now load this program again and see if we manage to disable the limit switches. Of course, it does make sense to have limit switches active mainly because we are not using them. Okay, communication is running, axis started to run, it's in state 100, which is very nice. And now we do again enable, enable regulator, we have a run, again we put 360. and we execute and we see our axis is running now direction is current and that means it's technically positive because the last one is positive if we want to change direction we type minus one and we re-execute this function block so it will stop and change direction if you 
have a direction one, it is going to be positive. On an execute, it will change direction. And now what we can do is try to stop. You need to put some deacceleration value, let's say 500, to make it a little bit more aggressive, and we execute. What this will do, it will stop the axis, but also it will cancel completely the profile running in the background. And here, when you remove execute, none of the function blocks are anymore active that we use. Now you can stop your MC power. And completely disable everything. That's it for today. In next video, we will start a little bit more in, in administrative way, just to show status, how to read out error, which we saw today, for example, on our screen. Hope you enjoyed the video. And please, if you like it, put thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you till next video. Bye.